as you guys already know, I bought this Windows 7 computer from eBay for just £30. Now, after I made that video, I put out a little question. Should I put Windows Vista, Windows 8.1 or Windows 10 on it? And you guys seem to think for some odd reason that Windows 8.1 would be the best operating system to put on here. But it kind of makes sense. Windows 8.1 was built to be light and fast. Um, it was built for mobile devices like laptops, tablets and even phones back when that was a thing. And so I think this is one of the things that people hated about Windows 8.1. But it's probably one of the things that made it a very strong operating system in some other senses. Although now Windows 8.1 is being used on less than 1.5% of PCs and laptops which is uh, pretty low. So because it took me a while to get Windows 7 working properly on this computer, I don't want to get rid of that straight away. So I'm going to go ahead and buy another SSD, just a cheap used one off eBay, to put Windows 8.1 and any other operating systems on and do some experimenting. So to create a Windows 8.1 boot drive, we're using a piece of software called Rufus, uh, specifically Rufus 4.3. Um, we're going to select our boot drive here, then go here, click this, then download. We've clicked download, and now we're going to pick Windows 8.1. Continue. What it will then do is it will get us the official ISO. Um, so here we go. Windows 8.1 standard. And then we will create a bootable USB stick from it. So we followed a couple more steps. Now we are selecting architecture, x64. So we're doing 8.1, update 3, 8.1. Uh, English x64 download save it's now going to download the ISO so after a little while it is now installed and um, I had to swap out the USB stick for a slightly larger drive because 4 gigabytes wasn't enough to install Windows 8.1 but we now have a bootable drive which we can plug into the computer and use to install Windows 8.1 so I've been greeted by the setup menu so I'm gonna go through the setup this is already significantly easier than installing Windows XP. That was the fastest Windows install I have ever seen. It was probably 10 minutes and I'm at desktop. From plugging it in, booting it up, going through the process, the whole lot, 10, 12 minutes, I'm now at the desktop. Of course now, I just need to install some drivers for the graphics and for some other components of the computer, and then we're ready to get testing. Okay, so that initial install was the only thing that went smoothly. Everything else went wrong. I saw this screen many a time, um, whether it be trying to launch a game or just trying to exist on the computer. Uh, it wasn't having it. This is probably one of the most unstable experiences I've ever had. As I've never properly used Windows 8 or 8.1 before, the first thing I did was have a little bit of a play around, have a look at some themes, explore some different features of the operating system, and honestly it didn't really impress me, specifically this start menu here. Horrible. Then I tried the Microsoft Store, didn't work, wouldn't load, this may be because I haven't activated Windows, um, or it might be because it just doesn't work on Windows 8.1 anymore. I really genuinely hate the Metro apps and the way that you can't get out of them um, and the fact that there are so many of these applications that force you into Metro mode and they can't be used alongside the desktop um, in a very smooth way whatsoever. It is genuinely an experience that makes you want to rip your hair out your scalp. I actually think the start menu does look quite nice, it's just a shame that it's so shit to use when you've got a keyboard and mouse. It's quite obviously designed for mobile device use like tablets or laptops with touch screens um, and it just does not suit the desktop experience. As you can also see Microsoft Edge has been discontinued for Windows 8.1 and this seems to be a similar story for most applications including Steam which is very interesting because they discontinued things for Windows 8 and 8.1 at the same time they discontinued things for Windows 7 so it just goes to show Windows 7 was a lot more popular whereas Windows 8 and 8.1 never really caught on and I'm starting to see why moving on to my actual experience with the computer so first thing gaming um, I did try to run the same benchmarks that I ran when this computer was running Windows 7 which included Roblox however I got that blue screen every single time I tried to launch Roblox. I think this is to do with stability issues and from looking online a lot of people have had problems with Roblox and Windows 8 and 8.1 with it trying to run it in Metro mode even though it's not capable of running it in Metro mode because it's not supported and it causes crashes um, and other things like that. I'm not too sure on it, all I know is it didn't work on Windows 8.1 but it worked totally fine on Windows 7. In fact, the only game I was able to run and get an actual benchmark on was fucking Shooty Skies, which had a minimum FPS of 35, 
a maximum of 44 and an average of 42. So because these are all quite close together, there were no real stuttering and it was quite smooth, plenty playable, um, and it was a fun experience. And obviously that was at four times anti-aliasing at 900p, the same settings that we used last time we tested. Um, so see on the screen how that compares to last time. And as you'll see, it's pretty much the same, except for the fact that we got a slightly higher average this time. So what about day-to-day -day usage experiences such as emails, web browsing and things like that? So it was the same sort of performance as Windows 7, even the same sort of support because most things that have discontinued Windows 7 have also discontinued 8 and 8.1, but just with a harder to use interface, although actually arguably quite a nice looking one, it, it was buggy and difficult to use in comparison to Windows 7 and Windows 10. I would even go as far to say that I preferred Windows 11 to Windows 8.1 and I really do not care much for Windows 11 at all. Now I'm not saying that Windows 8.1 is a totally bad system and that you shouldn't use it at all. It boils down to personal opinion in the end. But what I'm testing here is does it perform any better on this computer than Windows 7? The answer is no. It performs worse. Would I recommend upgrading a Windows 7 computer to Windows 8.1 if you don't want to use Windows 10 or 11? Absolutely not go ahead and use Linux or something else if you need a current system. Windows 8.1 isn't a current system anyway, it's been discontinued, it's been discontinued for about a year now um, and overall unlike Windows 7 I can't see a real reason why you'd want to stay with Windows 8 or 8.1. So overall what we've confirmed is the only operating system that will really run on this computer and still be usable in this day and age is Windows 10 or some distribution of Linux. That is unless you're part of the 1% who like Windows 8.1 and swear by it even though it sucks ass. I completely understand that this is not the video that some of you guys were hoping for. I was not able to get any real benchmarks due to technical difficulties as well as time constraints. I don't have forever to spend troubleshooting on things like this. Um, unfortunately, I wish I did have the time, but I don't. Um, but we were able to have a look and see, is Windows 8.1 better than Windows 7? And I'm pretty sure that we can all agree it's not. Now, if you disagree, your opinion probably doesn't matter that much anyway, if you know what I mean. But does my initial conclusion on this machine still stand? Was it a good buy? I believe it was. Um, and I have no reason to doubt that this can run Windows 10 just fine. And I also have no reason to doubt that running Linux, it would just excel. Especially as there are applications like Wine, where you can actually start running EXE files um, on a Linux machine. That just makes it a no-brainer for some people. So I think that pretty much ends the video there. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know by giving me a like and commenting down below. Um, any suggestions you may have, I'm totally open to. If you have any thoughts on this video, just let me know down below. Uh, I'm gonna get on to editing this video now and getting it published, getting it out there. And in order to do that, I have to go make myself another cup of tea because I am now empty on tea and that's never good news. So I've gotta go and put the kettle on.